So, welcome again uh, in my course power electronics applications in power system. In the last lecture, I, I discuss a numerical problem related to the power flow of a long lossless transmission line, right. And before, we, I, I also discuss uh, the derivation of the active and reactive power of a long lossless transmission line. But uh, if you remember that lecture, you will see that uh, I, I derive the expressions for active and reactive power at the both ends of the line. Okay? So, that is sending end of the line and receiving end of the line. So, in this particular lecture, I will discuss uh, or rather I will derive the expression for active and reactive power at an intermediate point of a transmission line and the uh, point would be measured uh, from the sending end side. Okay. So, this will uh, give a generalized expression for active and reactive power at any point of a transmission line uh, and then we can put the appropriate uh, uh, conditions to, to find out uh, the expressions for uh, this uh, power flow in the active and reactive power flow of a uh, transmission line its sending end and receiving end side as well. We will verify whether our generalized expression matches with the expression we derived before. So, let us start derivation of expressions of active and reactive power in a intermediate point of a long comma lossless transmission line ok so this is the this is the title of this today's lecture and here we have the assumption of we have the assumptions of it is a long transmission line and number 2 it is lossless transmission line. So, these are the our assumptions. Okay. Now, what we will consider over here is that we have a long transmission line. This is suppose the sending end site, this is support the sending end site. and this is suppose the receiving end site end site ok. So, what we will do is from the sending end we will take uh, a point which is x distance away from the sending end and at this point we will determine what is the active power is flowing through the line and what is the reactive power flowing flowing through the line. So, our goal is or our goals are to determine number 1 the expression for active power and the expressions for reactive power at the point uh, x which is located at a distance x meter or x kilometer away from the sending end site. So, that is what our goal is. So, once we can derive the expression of P x and Q x, it would represent a generalized expression for active and reactive power. Now, we can put the boundary conditions uh, that when x is equal to 0, it means that, that uh, P x stands for 
the active power flowing through the sending end site when x is equal to L uh, P x represent that uh, uh, this uh, active power flowing through the receiving end site provided that the line length is L, L meter or L kilometer right. Now, let us derive the expression. So, uh, we know that uh, this at this point x uh, which is located x meter or x kilometer away from the sending end site, we have the expressions for uh, voltage V x uh, which can be written as V s cos beta x minus j of i s z c sin beta x. Also at this point the expressions for current can be represented as minus j V s sin beta x divided by z c plus uh, i s cos beta x. Remember these two expressions are already derived in the previous lectures okay. and this V x represents per phase, per phase voltage at a point x distant from the sending end. Okay. So, as this I x is, so I x represent the per fetch current at a point which is x distance away from the sending end. Okay. So, we already have the derivation of these expressions and as you know this Z c represents the surge impedance, beta represents the uh, fetch constant and uh, V s represents the voltage at the sending end site and I s represents the voltage at the sending end site. So, this is known to us. So, we can write that. So, voltage at this point is V s, current at this point is I s and voltage at this point is V r, current at this point is I r. Okay. So, here as you know this V s V r are per phase voltage at the sending end of the line, sending end of the line right. So, as this I s and I r which uh, represent uh, this uh, sending end and receiving end side voltage. So, so this is sending end of course, I should write that this V r represents receiving end of receiving end of the line. Okay. So, one can understand these are all these V s V r uh, I s I r represent the usual notations which we use throughout this lecture. Right. Now, what we will do is that we will find out this P x and Q x. So, we know that complex power, complex power at this point x is equal to S x is equal to 3 times of V of x multiplied by I of x conjugate. Okay. So, this 3 basically represents the total complex power consumptions at the point x. Okay. So, we will put this all these uh, values whichever we uh, derived earlier all this here. So, what we will get this 3 multiplied by this V x, V x represent V s cos beta x minus j i s z c sin beta x multiplied by this i x conjugate. So, it would basically represent i s, I am just writing this part before. So, 
so this is i s conjugate cos beta x plus j v s conjugate sin beta x divided by z c. Okay. Now, uh, what we will do is, we will consider that, let consider that this uh, V s is basically our reference voltage which represent V s at an angle 0 and V r phasor is basically equal to V r at an angle minus delta. It means that delta is phase angle difference between sending and receiving end of the line. Right? We will put this over here. One thing that I will tell that if you derive this S x, so what we will get is S x will be equal to if we simplify this, uh, this expressions and put V s is equal to this V s at an angle 0 and V r it uh, is equal to V r at an angle minus delta. So, what we will get is it is equal to 3 V s I s phasor conjugate cos square beta x plus I s phasor multiplied by sin square beta x plus j 3 sin 2 beta x divided by 2 multiplied by V s square divided by z c minus I s square divided by the multiplied by z c. Now, look at what we did is we converted this whole equation into two part one is this one is that. Okay. Now, here you can see that uh, the in this part uh, this uh, cos square beta x and sin square beta x uh, are, are uh, scalar quantities, but this I s uh, conjugate this one is a phasor quantity. So, as this I s is a phasor quantity. So, we have to uh, find out the expression for I s conjugate and I s and we have to put over here. So, that we get this expression. Similarly, uh, here in this particular segment, in this particular segment, in this segment, we know that this is a scalar quantity. V s it is a phasor quantity, but we know that it is equal to uh, V s at an angle 0. So, this is V s phasor is as good as uh, a scalar quantity because we consider the sending and voltage as a uh, we consider the sending and voltage as a reference and i s uh, square also we need to determine since it is a uh, phasor quantity. So, what we have to find out? We have to find out uh, three uh, quantities expression for these three quantities one is i s conjugate, one is i s itself another is I s phasor square. So, these three quantities are to be derived the expression what these three quantities are to be derived then only you can put this expression over here. So, that we will get this expression of S of x. Okay. Now, let us find this in order to find this as we know that as we consider that at x is equal to L v of x is equal to v of r, it is the receiving end. This is discussed uh, many times that uh, this when we consider x is varying from uh, the sending end side. So, when x becomes equal to L, so uh, the v x become equal to v r, i x will become equal to i r. Right? So, so we will get a relationship then v r is equal to 
भि एस कस विटाएल माइनस जे आई एस जेड सी सैन विटाएल दिस रिलेशनशिप उ गेट फ्रम दिस इक्वेशन दिस इक्वेशन दिस इक्वेशन हुईच इज शोन इन दिस स्लाइड दैट इफ यू पुट भि एक्स एक्स इज इक्ल टू एल देन दिस भि एक्स उल भी इक्ल टू भि एर एंड दिस बीटा एक्स उल भी बीटा एल सो दिस उल गिव दिस इक्वेशन राइट नाउ फ्रॉम दिस वी कैन फाइंड आउट व्हाट इज द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर आई एस सो आई एस इज इक्ल टू भि एस कॉस बीटा एल माइनस भि एर डिवाइडेड बाई जे जेड सी साइन बीटा एल राइट नाउ वी कैन पुट दिस वैल्यूज सो भि एस इज आवर रेफारेंस वोल्टेज सो इट इज इट्स एंगल इज जीरो सो दिस इज भि एस कॉस बीटा एल इट्स सेल्फ एंड भि आर फेजर इज बेसिकली रिप्रेजेंटिंग मैगनीट्यूड भि आर एट एन एंगल माइनस डेल्टा डिवाइडेड बाई जे जेड सी साइन बीटा एल राइट सो दिस इज वाट द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर आई ऑफ एस हुई वी आर इंटेंडिंग टू डिराइव ओके नाउ फ्रॉम दिस एक्सप्रेशन वी कैन फाइंड आउट ऑल्सो दिस आई ऑफ एस इज इक्ल टू भि एस कॉस बीटा एल माइनस सो इफ यू कन्वार्ट दिस फ्रॉम पोलार टू रेक्टेंगुलर कोअर्डिनेट सो व्हाट उल गेट दिस उल बी भि आर कॉस डेल्टा प्लस इट उल बी जे भि आर साइन डेल्टा बिकज वन एट एन एंगल डेल्टा मीन्स कॉस डेल्टा माइनस जे ऑफ साइन डेल्टा दिस इज यू नो राइट नाउ दिस डिवाइडेड बाय जे जेड सी साइन बीटा एल ओके नाउ इफ वी टेक दिस आई एस फेजर स्क्वायर सो व्हाट विल गेट विल गेट भि एस कॉस बीटा एल माइनस भि आर कॉस डेल्टा होल स्क्वायर प्लस भि आर साइन डेल्टा होल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय जेड सी स्क्वायर साइन स्क्वायर बीटा एल सो यू ऑल्सो गेट द एक्सप्रेशन फॉर आई एस फेजर स्क्वायर दिस इज आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट द मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ दिस आई एस फेजर स्क्वायर व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड एज पार एज माय लास्ट एक्सप्रेशन इज कंसर्न सो दिस इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड we also can find out this is star that is is conjugate from this relationship so you are can derive so this is i am just leaving uh, for you so once you get this three expression uh, this three expressions can be put over here and uh, we can also put this vs as a vs phasor as a vs square and we can put this i square expression which we derived already so once you put all this expression over here we will get an expression for this cos x we will get the expression of s of x so we find the expressions for for s of x as s of x is equal to 3 vs vr divided by zc sin beta l sin delta plus j 3 multiplied by भि एस स्क्वायर साइन टू बीटा एल माइनस बीटा एक्स माइनस टू भि एस भि आर कस डेल्टा साइन बीटा एल माइनस टू बीटा एक्स माइनस 
भि आर स्कोर सैन टू बीटा एक्स डिवाइडेड बै टू जेड सी सैन स्कोर बीटा एल ओके सो वन इंटरेस्टिंग पॉइंट of this derivation is this derivation we can find out from this by putting this uh, expressions of i s square i s and i s conjugate in the previous expression and one interesting uh, point is that this real part of this s x which is this is independent of x which you will obtain if you derive it correctly ok and this is very true because this uh, represent this uh, real part of S x basically represent this active power as you know and imaginary part of this S x represent the reactive power. Okay. So, when you consider this uh, active power of a lossless long transmission line, since there is no loss in, a, uh, in this uh, particular line uh, considered, so the active power expression will the independent of x and it will be constant that uh, magnitude of this active power flow would be constant at each and every point of the line starting from the sending end to receiving end. Let us see. So, what we will get uh, from this expression is that this real part is represent this P x that is active power so it is equal to 3 V s V r divided by Z c sin beta l sin delta. Now, you can accommodate this 3 inside this V s remember this V s and V r they are per fetch quantity V s V r are per fetch quantity. Okay. So, when you convert to uh, this uh, line to line quantity, so this expression would be V s line to line V r line to line divided by Z c sin beta l sin delta, where V s line to this represent line to line voltage at the sending end. Okay. Similarly, V r represents this line to line voltage of the sending end. So, one important uh, observations from this is this expression, this expression, this expression is independent, independent of x, which is expected because uh, this power flow of a lossless transmission line, lossless long transmission line will remain constant at each and every point of the line. Okay. So, th this is the inference that you can make from this. Okay. So, this imaginary part of this S x as you know, this represent q of x. So, let us write it. So, the reactive power reactive power expression q of x will be equal to 3 times V s square sin 2 beta l minus beta x minus 2 V s V r cos delta sin beta l minus 2 beta x minus this V r square sin 2 beta x divided by 2 Z c sin square beta l. Okay. 
So, the imaginary part of S x represents this reactive power that is this, this part represents this reactive part. I just put this as a q x, but one thing that you can note that similar to this active power, reactive power expression is not independent of x. Okay. So, it is basically function of x. So, unlike this active power, so one comment that you can put over here is that unlike the expression of active power the expression for for q x is or rather I should write q of x is dependent on x or function of x. So, which is very important. So, that represents that uh, this uh, reactive power flow through a lossless transmission line is not same at each and every point of a lossless long transmission line. right? Now, from this expression of this q x, we can verify whether the, the correctness of this expression by putting this boundary conditions. So, what is our boundary condition? Our boundary conditions are at x is equal to 0, q of x represent q of s and at x is equal to l q of x represent q of r, where this q of s represents uh, the reactive power at the sending end of the transmission line and q of r represents the reactive power at the receiving end of the transmission line. right? Now, let us find out this uh, by putting this boundary condition. So, if I put this first boundary condition, so q of x when x is equal to 0 that is q s is equal to 3 of v square. So, if we put this uh, beta x would be 0, so this would be sin 2 beta l minus 2 v s here cos delta sin if I put uh, this uh, x is equal to 0. So, this will be sin beta l minus v r square. So, if I put this uh, beta x is equal to 0. So, this would be multiplied by 0. So, this would be cancelled out. So, this divided by 2 z c sin square beta l. Now, we know that this this is equal to v s square this uh, is equal to sin 2 beta l can be expressed as sin 2 sin beta l cos beta l. So, we can write it as a multiplied by 2 sin beta l cos beta l minus 2 v s here cos delta sin beta l divided by 2 z c sin square beta l. Now, you look at uh, this expression, what we can do is that this sin beta l, this sin beta l would be cancelled out the one sin beta l in the denominator. Similarly, this 2 and this 2 would be cancelled out this denominator 2. So, what we will left is v s square cos beta l minus v s v r cos delta divided by z c sin beta l. This is what the exact expression that we uh, obtained in my previous lecture when we derived the expressions for active and reactive power at the sending end side. Right? So, this can be also written as 
this Qs can be also written as this 3 can be absorbed if we consider Vs line to line square cos beta L uh, minus this Vs line to line multiplied by Vr line to line cos bit delta divided by Zc sin beta L. This is what the exact expression we derived in the previous lectures. Okay. Similarly, we will put another boundary condition that q x is equal to L is equal to q r which is equal to 3 times. So, if I put uh, x as a L, so this part will be the first part would be eliminated. So, this will be minus 2 V s here because we will put this uh, beta x is equal to L. So, it will be beta L minus beta L. So, which will be 0. So, sin 0 is 0. So, then this part would be this part would be minus 2 V s here cos delta sin. So, if I put beta uh, x as a beta L, so it will be minus beta L which is equal to plus sin beta L minus V r square sin 2 beta L divided by 2 Z c sin square beta L. Again, if we split this sin 2 beta L uh, into a 2 sin beta L cos beta L. So, similar to before. So, what we will get is as V s V r cos delta minus V r square cos beta L divided by Z c sin beta L. This is exact the relationship that we obtained before. Okay? So, this is the exact relationship we obtained before. So, this can be also written by absorbing 3 inside uh, this uh, V s. So, this can be written as V s line to line multiplied by V r line to line cos delta minus this is V r square line to line cos beta L divided by Z c sin beta L. So, this is what the exact relationship that we got. If you look back and see, this is what the exact relationship. This means that whatever the generalized expression of Qx that we get is correct. Okay. So, this, this uh, proves the correctness of the expressions for Px and Qx with what we obtain. Okay. Now, what is very important for us now uh, to, to understand the conditions uh, for the voltage and active power and reactive power throughout the line. Okay. So, in order to understand that what we will do is we will plot uh, this uh, voltage magnitude versus x. We will also plot the active power magnitude with x. We will also plot the reactive power magnitude with x. Okay. So, now what we will do is that let us plot the following to understand the differences among among P, Q and V over x. So, what we will do? We will plot V of x versus x. We will also plot P of x versus x. We will also plot Q of x versus x. Now, what is x? S, x is the distance, uh, x represents a point which is x distant away from the sending end, where x is a 
x represents a point in long lossless transmission line line which is and the point is x distant away from the sending end okay so this we can plot by uh, considering this uh, expressions that we receive over here. So, one is this expression, one is the expressions of p of x that which we obtained over here that is this, this expression, another is the expressions for this q of x which we obtain over here that is this expression. Okay. So, if we plot this then we can comment many things, we can understand many important property of a transmission line. Now, before that before we plot this, what we will consider that we will take another assumption, we will take another assumption. Now, another assumption that I will take that this line is symmetrical, okay. So, this assumption we will take over the assumption that this is a long line and this is a lossless line. Of course, this is a three phase line that also you should understand even though it is not mentioned or even though I do not mention many times. Okay. Now, what do you mean by the symmetrical line? A symmetrical line is that line where the sending end voltage magnitude is equal to the receiving end voltage magnitude. Okay the sending and voltage magnitude is equal to the receiving and voltage magnitude. When it is it happens then uh, this, this is called a symmetrical line. Okay. So, we consider that uh, this is a voltage V. Okay. So, uh, the sending and voltage and receiving and voltage are equal and this is equal to a voltage V. When we have so, we can we can plot this active and reactive power and the voltage conditions also. And we will understand uh, in, in more better way th than uh, this unsymmetrical line. So, if you consider so and if you plot this V x versus x from the expression that we get, remember this V x represents the voltage magnitude. Uh, if you put this uh, this this depends upon this cos beta x, this depends upon sin beta x, this depends upon V s i s also, where i s you can derive uh, from this expression that we derive over here, uh, this is the expressions of i s and put over there. Now, what we will get if you plot this, then this plot would be something like that. Suppose, this represents x is equal to 0. x is equal to 0, it means that it is sending end side and this represents x is equal to L which is receiving end side. Okay. So, if you plot this voltage, the voltage plot would be something like that. When uh, uh, see one thing that we should understand that this voltage V x would be function of angle delta. Okay. And by considering different value of delta, we can find out the plot. Okay. So, when we consider delta is equal to 0, the plot would be something like that. This corresponds to delta is equal to 0. Okay. And when we consider delta is equal to 90 degree, the plot would be something like that. This corresponds to delta is equal to 90 degree. And when you go for the changing delta, uh, then the plot there would be an intermediate plot like this, like this, like this, and so on. Okay. So this is the plot of this voltage uh, magnitude at any point x, which is uh, x distant away from the sending end side. 
okay. Now, similar to that if we plot this p of x with respect to x, again we consider that this is x is equal to 0. So, sending and side this is x is equal to L that is receiving end side. Okay. Now, when you consider, so you can understand that here also this P x is function of angle delta. So, when angle delta is equal to 0, so P would be 0. So, this corresponds to angle delta is equal to 0. And when uh, this delta is equal to 90 degree, so P x suppose is this, this corresponds to delta is equal to 90 degree. And intermediate all these values of delta you can get this plot like this. So, this represents a constant value of power uh, in spite of varying the distance, uh, but it depends upon the uh, this angle delta. Okay. So, what is angle delta? If I come back and show you this angle delta represents the phase angle difference between the sending end and receiving end side of the line. So, depending upon that we will have different plots over here. So, this this uh, when we will increasing delta, so the plot will be shifted upward. Whereas, here if we increasing the value of the delta, the plot would be downward. So, this is by varying this angle delta. Now, Next, what we will do? We will plot this q x versus x. Again, for this plot also, this plot would be something different because q x can be negative as well. So, we will consider this corresponds to x is equal to 0, this corresponds to x is equal to L. So, this is our sending end, this is our receiving end. So, from that expre expression of q x, if you put different values of x, so we will get different plot. Okay. So, uh, what we will see is that that q x unlike uh, of this v x and p x can be also a negative quantity. Okay. So, when q x uh, now let us plot this q x corresponds to angle delta is equal to 0. When delta is equal to 0, the plot would be this is suppose midpoint. So, it should be something like that. Okay. So, this corresponds to delta is equal to 0. Okay. And when delta is equal to 90 degree, the plot would be something like that. So, this corresponds to delta is equal to 90 degree. Okay. So, when delta is equal to 0, you can see that this x is equal to 0 represent this side is q s and this side is q r. Okay. So, q s is negative when delta is equal to 90 degree you see that q s is positive and when delta is equal to 0 q r is positive and when delta is equal to 90 degree q r becomes negative. Now, what this positive negative uh, sign do imply? that is very important to understand. Uh, so, you can understand that uh, this, this we consider this active power is flowing from the sending end to the receiving end. So, when uh, similar to that the reactive power uh, when uh, it is flowing from uh, sending end to receiving end side we consider it is a positive. So, the negative of uh, this reactive power at the sending end side means actually this reactive power is coming into the sending end from the uh, midpoint or some other point. Okay. Similarly, uh, this uh, we consider that uh, positive reactive power at the receiving end implies to uh, 
the fact that uh, this reactive power is coming into the receiving end site from the sending end site. So, a negative reactive power at the receiving end site implies to that reactive power is actually flowing to the opposite side which means that reactive power is actually flowing from the receiving end to sending end. Okay. And very interestingly you can see that uh, this, this point where this point where this uh, reactive power q x is 0 is basically the point corresponds to L by 2. This corresponds to x is equal to L by 2. So, this point is basically the meet point of the transmission line, meet point of the line. So, at this meet point this q x or I should write it q l by 2 is equal to 0 irrespective of this different values of delta. Now, the question is wh why this delta gets changed? we consider delta is equal to 0, we consider delta is equal to 90 degree. So, delta can change from 0 to 90 degree uh, when, when this delta can change, when does this delta can change. Uh, so, this happens when um, uh, this, this load at the receiving end side is continuously changing. Okay? So, depending upon the uh, you know value of the loading at the receiving end, the angle delta will change. Right? So, when this angle delta will change, this active power flow will change, so as the reactive power okay, at each and every point. But one thing that you can note over here is that at midpoint, this reactive power becomes 0 and this happens only for symmetrical line. We consider the assumption that symmetrical line. Now, let us examine why this happens. Okay. So, from this figure you can see this is what the midpoint condition, this is what the midpoint condition. So, you can see when delta is equal to 0, this midpoint voltage is higher than the sending end and receiving end side. What does it mean? If your sending end and, and receiving end voltage are 1 per unit, then midpoint voltage is above of 1 per unit. It could be 1.05, it could be 1.07 and so on. So, it means that there is some uh, amount of over voltage is happening. So, this is basically this much of over voltage this much of over voltage is happening at the midpoint. Similarly, when delta is equal to 90 degree, you can see that there is this much of under voltage is happening at the midpoint. So, what you can see is that uh, midpoint of a transmission line continuously suffering from either over voltage or under voltage except a flat voltage profile which happens when the line is uh, loaded with surge impedance which I already discussed. So, except that special case the midpoint that is that corresponds to x is equal to L by 2 continuously suffer from either under voltage or over voltage. Now, the question is some degree of over voltage and under voltage are acceptable. So, we do not have anything to do, uh, it is absolutely acceptable. If this over voltage and under voltage go beyond this acceptable range, then we need to have some remedial measure, we need to have some mitigation uh, of that. Okay. So, this is called over voltage and under voltage mitigation and the power electronic compensators which I will be uh, discussing in uh, uh, future lectures would be uh, basically uh, the mitigating devices for this type of under voltage and over voltage. Okay. Now, you, one thing that if I note down the comment from this or remarks that number worked, there is some amount of over voltage. or under voltage throughout the line, line except the surge impedance loading S i L. Okay. Number 2, the over voltage
and under voltage are more vulnerable at the midpoint of the line. These two remarks we can put by looking at this voltage profile of the line. This is this plot is called voltage profile of the line. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that you can consider that when their delta correspond delta is equal to 0. So, at delta is equal to 0, this uh, midpoint voltage is higher than this sending end and receiving end both side voltage. So, at that time as you know the reactive power flows in this direction in this direction uh, reactive power flows that is from higher voltage side to the lower voltage side. So, actual reactive power is basically flowing from uh, away from the midpoint. So, this is same thing is happening over here. So, here Q s is negative it means that reactive power is actually flowing if we plot this uh, actually uh, this this particular line when delta is equal to 0 then it suppose this is midpoint this is corresponds to x is equal to 0 this corresponds to x is equal to l and this corresponds to x is equal to l by 2. So, actually this reactive power is flowing in this direction it means that this at sending end reactive power is flowing from the midpoint to the sending end and from the midpoint to the receiving end side. This happens due to this over voltage at this midpoint during this delta is equal to 0. But things would be opposite when you consider delta is equal to 90 degrees. Suppose this is what the line is again x is equal to 0, this is x is equal to L and this is what x is equal to L by 2 that is midpoint and we consider the case delta is equal to 90 degree. So, when it happens actually this reactive power, so in at this time there is under voltage at the midpoint. So, the Q will come uh, from the sending end and the from the receiving end into this midpoint where this Q is 0. So, that means that Q is coming from the sending end and the receiving end this Q is coming and it is becoming 0 at the midpoint. So, this could be the uh, you know implication of this negative sign of Q s and Q r. Okay. So, this we can uh, understand that this reactive power flow of the line depends upon the voltage conditions. Okay. So, when voltage reactive power always flow from higher voltage side to the lower voltage side. So, so during this uh, delta is equal to 90 degree which is theoretically maximum loading condition during that time whatever this uh, direction of the flow of the reactive power is, is uh, significantly different to uh, the conditions when delta is equal to 0. When delta is equal to 0, these conditions refer to the fact that it is a line is uh, not loaded at all, line is uh, unloaded or line is uh, operating at no load conditions. So, when it is uh, no load condition, so delta is equal to 0 corresponding, this corresponds to no load condition no load condition and this corresponds to maximum theoretical maximum loading condition. So, in this you know two different conditions these are the flow of the reactive power whereas, this active power magnitude gets change, but it remains constant throughout the line because we consider the line to be lossless. Okay. So, these are the some of the facts that I, I want to uh, share with you in this particular lecture and one thing you can understand that. Uh, when we have a significant over voltage in the at this midpoint, we need some mitigation, we need some mitigation of this over voltage as well as this under voltage. Here itself we need the use of the compensator, somebody some device should be there which will mitigate this over voltage and under voltage. And uh, I will discuss uh, that uh, this, this uh, compensators uh, the way they can uh, mitigate this over voltage and under voltage okay, in my future lectures. So, this is what I, I, I want to discuss today and uh, thank you very much for your attention.